What's up, YouTube? Sharman Xsoft here, coming at you guys with a brand new Friday the 13th game video. And today, we're going to be covering the virtual cabin again, but we are going to be showing you the item room, showing you some new unlocks, hidden secrets, and even some theories and shoutouts. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and start getting into that. Now, what you can see right here is the Not Chart, and if you are unfamiliar with this, we have been unlocking different markers on it. There's five we've already unlocked. There were three that were in the counselor's room and two that were in the Jason's room. So, uh, well, at least one was upstairs and one was in the Jason room. It just took place all within that update. So if you've not went ahead and seen some of my other cabin videos, then please be sure to go ahead and check them out as you will be able to find out how to do all these unlocks and more. But for now, let's go ahead and check out this item room, shall we? All right. Dun, 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 dun. This item room is so awesome. I truly am in all of this room. It is about five in the morning. I have been spending a lot of time in here looking around at different things, different references and whatnot, so I have a good list of things for you guys to see. I know the main thing that you guys want to see right away, which I always tend to show first, is the new unlock references so let's go ahead and do them real fast get them right out of the way there is two right now and the first one is the Jarvis family history book now if you guys are unfamiliar you, you need to get these things more so centered on your screen click but you need to get them centered on your screen and more so in order for them to zoom in properly. So you just heard that click. That would be the first one. You can see we get the top left mark right here. That's the one that it just popped up. All right. And then we have one more to show you here. And there is actually a third, but it doesn't put up a mark. And the next one is right here on the side of this desk. Hopefully it's about that. There it is. Heard to click. That was a little bit short one there on the kill sounds and whatnot, but court was here 86. This is a reference from Friday to 13th part six. Court was the uh, counselor that was driving the RV and uh, he took that knife to the side of the head. So court was here. 86 uh, is a reference from Friday the 13th part six. And that gives you the second unlock as you can see here on the bottom left side. All right, so again, two are the unlocks. That's pretty much what we found right there. And the third is another zoomable, and it's the machete. But the machete actually has kind of like a little trick to it. The door back here has to be open. If you close that door, it doesn't work out right. Now, it doesn't put a mark on the wall or anything like that, but if you get it centered and let it sit there for a little bit, it takes a little, takes a little bit of time. Just listen. waiting for it there we go hear the door just wait a little bit more and we get the sound of someone trying to open it so that if you look back now the door is closed so it's just a little thing to kind of freak out a little bit uh, pretty cool actually if you ask me but uh, again if you do close this door it will not work so you may hear the sound effects or whatnot but I, I don't believe it works at all if you truly have the door closed so keep that one in mind if you want to see that work make sure your door is open all right so let's go ahead and start talking about the different references the first one right here we can see has the SS Lazarus's cruises from Camp Crystal Lake to New York City. Now, if you don't know this reference, well, I would be really surprised, but this would be from Jason Takes Manhattan, uh, otherwise known as Friday the 13th, Part 8. So that right there is a awesome movie, if you ask me. I do think it is a pretty decent one. And uh, that would be your reference right there is the SS Lazarus was the boat they used to get over to Manhattan. Well, it was the initial boat until it sank, but you get the idea. Now, the next one here is this chair, which can be found in Friday the 13th Part 2. And you guys may have seen this picture before because there's a lot of references out in the main section of the cabin that use this same photo, but this right here is a reference to 
uh, the chair in Friday the 13th part two. All right. Now the cop car up here is kind of like a looks like a little toy cop car. I've not found any toy cop cars that I can think of in the movies. So we try to work off this paint scheme and maybe it will be a reference to the cop cars in the movies. But the blue stripe on the side is a hard thing to find. There is one in part seven that has a stripe, but it's a green stripe. So I'm still trying to look either for possibly a toy car or a cop car that matches this description, but I have not yet found one. Cool thing is if you click a button while looking at it, it'll go ahead and light up and sirens and all that good stuff. So pretty neat little trick they got going on there. Now, this here picture frame back here with the hoops or rings or whatever you want to call it, this would be from Friday the 13th Part 2 as well. You could find it in that same picture I was talking about, and you can find it in this scene where the one guy's dancing with Muff and the dog. So, pretty neat little thing right there. That would be the picture from Friday the 13th Part 2. Now, the little guy right here, the little monk guy or whatever you want to call him, he would be from Friday the 13th Part 3. You can see him there in the uh, juggling scene and whatnot, when, uh, or when Shelly's talking to Vera, you know, it's right there on the mantle of the fireplace next to the gong, but that is where you will find this little guy right here. Looking down, just take a little peek at what's inside the display case. You can see we have a bat, metal pipe, frying pan, and a cook pot. I believe the one uh, counselor from the part one smacked Mrs. Voorhees in the head with a frying pan, or it was either that or a cook pot. I can't remember, but that it was a pretty cool little thing. So you can see that. That would be more of a counselor weapon scooting on down here. You can see there's a 2x4 fire poker and a hatchet, which the fire poker and the 2x4 are out for cleaning, so they'll be putting them in later when they finish with uh, their whole design and everything. But you can see we have some more cool counselor weapons or items or whatever you want to call them right there. Pretty neat stuff right here in the display cases. All right. Now, the mask, we've already identified this in the counselor's room, is from Friday the 13th, Part 3. And this particular little guy here, whatever you want to call this, whether it be a coat hanger or some sort of lamp, this is found in the Higgins Haven house in Friday the 13th, Part 3 as well. And the American flag is from Friday the 13th, Part 2, as it is on a shorter pole, and the counselors go ahead and roll it up there in Friday the 13th, Part 2. All right, the red chair I've not been able to narrow down yet, so I've I've seen it a little bit, or at least references to possibly red chairs. But there is a red chair I'm still potentially looking for. Uh, I think this might be in part two. That's where I was kind of looking, and I seen it at least a reference to a small bit of it. And the CB radio you can see is in the display case right here, which has another type of animation you could say if you just push the button. You could hear it kind of clicks on pretty cool. But the CB radio, the reason why I sigh a little bit is this caused me a lot of grief. I spent a lot of time looking for the CB radio. I thought it was Tommy Jarvis's as he has a CB radio in his room in part four, but it does not match the same style. There's also a CB radio in the police department in a part six, but it does not match the style. Uh, I cannot seem to narrow this one down. But there is a CB radio out there somewhere, I'm going to assume. The cool part is we did not know about a CB radio. We knew that there would be a phone we can use to call the police in the game. But as you can see, there being a CB radio means we may have a secondary alternate means to call the police as well, rather than just a telephone. All right. Now we have some firecrackers back there. Pretty cool, if you ask me. I think that's going to be awesome because we know that Jason can hear sound for a pretty good distance when it comes to people and stealth skills and stuff like that. So if we can throw firecrackers that throw him off when he's out there hunting us, that is an awesome, cool thing in my opinion. There is a pocket knife that is out for cleaning. There is some car keys that are out for cleaning. And if you look, there is medical spray. What does that mean, my friends? That means it appears that in the game, we will probably be able to heal ourselves if we take some damage from Jason which means it doesn't seem like Jason is always going to be giving you that one-shot kill because it seems like there's a potential chance that you will be able to heal yourself. The bear trap, you guys that love the Friday the 13th, uh, or should I say the reboot, the 2009 reboot of Friday the 13th, um, you will be happy to say that, yes, I believe this bear trap is from that particular movie in the beginning scene. 
you can go ahead and push a button and you'll see that it will clamp down pretty cool and you can push another button and it will reset it but i do think it is all as well from the beginning scene of friday the 13th or should i say the 2009 reboot of friday the 13th as i can't think of a bear trap in any other location the boat back here is pretty cool this is a hard one to truly reference i do believe this is from friday the 13th part 7 uh the boat that was used that had the motor in it for part six was more of a canoe style whereas this is a white style boat like tina had when she was a kid in the beginning scene now it does not match the description perfectly and the one thing that throws me off as well is this motor is a lot bigger than the one she had in the scene as she had a little trolling motor this motor is a lot bigger but it still is a small motor nonetheless but the biggest reference to me that says that this is from part seven is that pink shirt now, I'm not saying Tina got nude in the boat or anything like that to get your minds out of the gutter. But one thing is for sure that is that Tina, as a child, wore a pink shirt in this boat. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and put this boat as a reference to Friday the 13th Part 7. The other cool thing is if you walk up to the engine, you will see that you can go ahead and start it up. Pretty cool if you ask me. All right, let me put and shut her off. Now the next one is this gaming table. The gaming table back here, I was thinking it was going to be from part 8, and I was talking to Paul Phoenix on Skype tonight. We were having our little chit chat and everything, pretty cool dude. And, uh, you know, he was telling me that, you know, maybe this table could be from part 2. I thought, I really did, I thought it was from probably from part 8 on the ship, you know, with the whole gaming setup and stuff that they had with the concert, little hall, dance floor. I was thinking it might be in there, but... He said due to the old style, he thinks that it could be in part two. And I went and looked into that, and he's absolutely correct. This here gaming setup, this table, is from Friday to 13th, part two. So massive shout out right there to Paul Phoenix for that. You've just saved me a lot of work and time trying to search through part eight, trying to find that reference. So part two is where you will find that. And if you guys don't know who Paul Phoenix is, he is another Friday to 13th YouTuber. So please be sure to go ahead and check out his channel. as I'll be putting a link in the description box down below for it. All right, the lamps, something that has caused me a quite a bit of headache tonight, and I've lost a lot of sleep over. <laughs> I have not found all of them, uh, but I have found some of them. This lamp here on the bottom with the world map you can see on the shade, I believe, is from Friday the 13th, Part 2. Now, I don't necessarily believe that the lamp is from Part 2, but the lamp shade you will be able to see in this scene right here. It's the same lamp shade as, you know, the map on it and everything like that. From Friday the 13th Part 2, but you can tell that the style of lamp is different as the, the one in Part 2 has that pole arm to it. Now, this here uh, lamp, or should I say fixture, in the center here would be from Friday the 13th Part 4 in the neighbor house where the kids had rented it and everything. You'll be able to see that around in there. And the one on the top left, that particular fixture, can be found in Friday the 13th Part 3. So, uh, you know, these are a little bit harder to narrow down, being the fixtures that they are. You know, the one on the upper right, I have not been able to narrow down, where the two on the bottom are definitely outside fixtures. And the lamp here on the bottom left is the same one that's out in the front room and uh, is very hard to narrow down, as I've seen a lot of lamps that look like this throughout the movies. And some of them kind of have more like candle fixtures underneath, so... It's a little bit hard to pinpoint, but, you know, we truly haven't really found that. I wasn't really looking for it all that much, but now that it is in the the cabin more so as a display, now I'll be looking even harder. All right, the birds would be from Friday the 13th, part two. There is a lot of taxidermy birds in this particular scene where the counselors are partying and whatnot, but uh, Friday the 13th, part two is where you're going to find the bird taxidermy. On the bottom here, we have a red sleeping bag and a mini type of generator. Now, the generator is throwing me for a huge loop. I cannot figure out where that's from, and the sleeping bag as well. I'm not too familiar with a red sleeping bag reference. It does have to be red. And uh, so, if, again, if anything that you guys uh, know, if you guys can find these scenes, please be sure to go ahead and let me know down in my description box where I can find them, and I'll be sure to shout you guys out in my next video on the cabin. Uh, as long as you and you guys can also do this on Twitter as well. So a lot of people go contact me on Twitter. If you send me a, a screenshot of on Twitter, I'll be able to show that and everything. So 
you know, put me in the right direction and you will go ahead and earn yourself a good little shout out right there. And uh, I do highly, highly appreciate it if you do find any of these because I am always searching myself. Now, the next ones here are the weapons. These particularly look like Jason's weapons. You can see we have the axe. We have the, uh, the pickaxe. We have the machete. We have the pitchfork. And we have the spear. We've pretty much identified all these before. We know the spear's from two. The pitchfork would be from three. The machete is pretty self-explanatory. You know, Jason's used the machete quite a bit throughout most of the movies. Axe would be three. The pickaxe would be two. Gas can I've already covered before. That is part three. The marshmallow, though, that one kind of gets me. We know that there's camp, you know, the, the counselors using marshmallows on part two or the, or the, with the uh, you know, roasted them and everything. But I don't know about Jason using a marshmallow. At least I can't think of one off the top of my head. And I'll be surprised if there actually is one that I'm just missing because that one blows my mind. Here, regardless, it looks like, you know, these would be more of your Jason weapons. And I think it's pretty funny that there is a marshmallow on a stick here for that. And it's really blowing my mind. I don't know why I'm missing that. Because now I feel like I really am missing it. And I just, I can't narrow it down. But, <laughs> all right. The coat hanger rack would be from Friday the 13th, part three. You can see it in this scene right here. You can definitely tell by the uh, the humps on the bottom along with the little uh, pieces towards the center. Those little triangular type pieces where you can hang stuff from. This is definitely the rack from Friday the 13th, part three. And... This particular light, you could say, on the pole would be also from the RV scene in Friday the 13th Part 6. You can see it has the fixture box on it where the RV became unplugged, or at least Jason went ahead and cut the quarter, ripped it out and uh, to cut the power to the RV. But these would be the pole fixtures from the RV park in Friday the 13th Part 6. The pants, you know, give you that whole aspect of the sex scene that potentially took place along with there, along with the court was here, 1986. That is that it's all basically connected to each other. Now, this particular blind back here, this trifold changing blind, I've not been able to truly narrow down. I've been wanting to say Friday the 13th Part 3, but there's a completely different design for the one in Friday the 13th Part 3 in the Higgins Haven house in Chris Higgins' room. So I can't truly say that just as of yet. But uh, that is the only reference I know of right now. So if you guys do find one, then please be sure to go ahead and let me know so I can shout you guys out. The lamp is definitely from Friday the 13th Part 3. We know that for sure. You can see that right here in this little clip. And the computer is definitely Tommy Jarvis's from Friday the 13th Part 4 that he's playing his little video games on. The killer axe that you find right here would be a reference to Friday the 13th Part 8, where the girl was killed with her own guitar on the boat by Jason Voorhees. And that, my friends, would about cover the item room. Pretty cool stuff, if you ask me. Also, those cabinets back there, I've not been able to narrow down, but you could definitely tell they're bathroom cabinets. All right, now let's move on real fast here to some shout-outs that we have for you guys. Some of you guys have been out there on the hunt, and you found some good stuff, and I want to say you all have an amazing eye for detail here. The first one is the wagon. I can clearly say it is safe now to clear it off the boards. I did a lot of searching in the Freddy vs. Jason series. There's a lot of people saying there's a wagon in Freddy vs. Jason. Still can't find that wagon there, so I don't know if that was a little troll or whatnot. But I postponed the two people who have found it for about a week or two now. And the two people who have found the wagons, at least two different rep wagons, would be Steeler fan Matt1993. He found a wagon in Friday the 13th Part 2. He says that you can only see about 10% of it as 90% of it is about hidden, at which he's absolutely right. It is on the bottom left-hand side of the screen that I'm showing you right here. And I can't believe he spotted that. But there is, in fact, a wagon over there. Now, it looks like a smaller one. Um, it could potentially be this one. I don't really know. And the other one was spotted by Maximus One Decimus, who spotted the wagon over here in the barn in Friday the 13th Part 3. And uh, you can see that it says Wayflyer on the side, which is more so like a radio flyer wagon. I believe they put Wayflyer for uh, the copyright reasons. But it definitely is a wagon back there. And uh, that would be another reference. The problem is I can't narrow down which one it truly is. You can see inside the cabin there is no writing on this wagon. So it kind of points a little bit more towards two. But we do know there's a lot of references to things in part three. So 
yeah, that one's kind of out being like, which one is it? So I will leave the choice up to you guys and give both of them a shout out. I know there was a few other people who did also name this particular wagon as a part three in the particular scene where Shelly was, but Maximus One Decimus had told me about it a few weeks ago. I've just been holding it back until I was able to truly scour uh, the Freddy vs. Jason movie to see if I can't find a wagon in there. So Maximus One Decimus and Steeler Fan Matt 1993 or, or 1933 both get the uh, shout outs for the wagon right there, my friends. But all of you guys truly get shout outs because you all are searching. I know you are. All right. Now the rocking horse. One of the things you just want to kind of pull your teeth out for when you're trying to search for it, you would definitely say that Beaumont. Oh man, I hate butchering these names, but at Beaumont XX, I believe it is, has found the horse in the Higgins Haven house in Friday the 13th Part 3. You basically only see it for about half a second at the very top of the staircase area, and it's very, really, really hard to catch. But he's absolutely right. There is a wooden horse right there, and we've never been able to find any other wooden horse, so it doesn't really look truly 100% like the one that's in the cabin. But I do believe that this is the horse that they were using. As you can see in the scene, you know, you can't even really see the whole horse to begin with. So I believe that the guys over at Gunman and Ilphonic went ahead and kind of improvised and made this particular horse for that reference of the one in Friday the 13th Part 3. So shout out to Beaumont XX. You are the man for finding the wooden rocking horse. The next one is a bit of a tough one. This is more of an apology right here. Now, Matt, Jamal... Jam Jamel, Matt Jamel, I believe it is. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the names again. Eleven has found the birdcage, guys. He found this about a week ago, roughly, and uh, I kind of pushed it off like, no, you know, that can't be it. Now, you know, he had said that it, this particular picture is the only thing he can find that kind of resembles the birdcage, and I looked at it, and I was like, no, that's a lamp, man. Like, there's, that, that can't be, you know, we're looking for a birdcage, and you found a lamp, but after going back through the movies again and really fine toothing it, he's absolutely correct. Okay, the problem was I assumed, along with a lot of other people, that this was a bird cage because of the cloth that's over top of it. You know, you go ahead and you put the birds to sleep by putting the cloth over it and everything, but that's not a bird cage. If you look at the little effect that's going on here, you can see that clamshell effect right around the edge. That is the corner edge of a lampshade that you will find in Friday the 13th, part three in the Higgins Haven house. So Matt, uh, Jamal, I'm sorry, Jamal, J <laughs> you guys are gonna just make fun of me because I can't pronounce everybody's names, I know. But you can read it right there, Matt, uh, Jamal 11 has found what we thought was the bird cage, and it is not a bird cage, but it is a floor lamp from Friday the 13th part three guys right there now if the light was on you'd be able to see through it but I truly believe he's absolutely right based on that clamshell effect that you can see back there this is the floor lamp from Friday the 13th part three it is not a bird cage so major shout out right there to Matt Jamal 11 all right and lastly there is one more addition to the counselor room that I wish to show you here guys as you can see Gunnamy and Alphonic had went and tweeted out uh, about a day or two ago that they are working on a new character model, which we all have heard of before, and that is the Flirty Girl. Now, I can't remember her exact description, so I will be putting it down in my description box down below if you guys want to know truly what uh, she was capable of doing. I do believe they said that when it comes to fear, she's probably the, the worst when it comes to fear. Like, her fear level will kind of go through the roof. She's not very good at fixing cars and things of that nature, but her stealth is pretty good, if I remember correctly, and uh, she's kind of more of an all-around type, decent character, so definitely something to check out, maybe consider playing. I definitely have put her on the list as somebody that I would like to play as well, and uh, you can see when it comes to her clothing outfit there, she kind of resembles the style of look that they gave the twins in Friday the 13th Part 4. So that is pretty cool right there. You can see definitely this is the flirty girl and she has joined the group of counselors right here. Pretty cool. All right. Now, lastly, before we go, I do want to give a really cool reference, I should say, even some shout outs here to a couple of people. Now, the first one is kind of a majority shout out to everybody. And I, I want to go over some quick theories that you guys have uh, brought me into. Now, the 
symbols here on the not chart people have been doing a lot of speculation on what they could trigger and i thought it was really cool that you guys have been kind of coming together to try to figure out what it could be now we don't know what it could be that's it's going to solve but there are some really cool ideas and i wanted to share them so again nothing confirmed just theories but you all probably the number one biggest thing that people have said is that when we solve this puzzle maybe jason will break into the cabin and kill us that would be pretty cool uh another person had went even more into speculation i remember this way back when i don't remember the name i do apologize for that but he did say that maybe we'll do the last unlock and it'll be somewhere out here on this chart and when we go to click it then uh jason will hurry up come inside kill us and as we're dying and our eyes are closing then we just see the last symbol light up red like click and then we're dead like <laughs> i thought that was pretty neat uh there was another person particularly Mr. Ham Haram, he said that the not chart, kind of, sort of, more so, I'm, I'm believing that he's more so talking about the symbol in the center and all of the symbols everywhere, but it kind of reminds him of the Zodiac Killer. So that's very interesting, my friends. The symbol in the center kind of gives you that little look of the Zodiac Killer a little bit, you know, the, the, the lines through and everything. Uh, it does have a circle, so it's a little bit different, but... You know, if you guys know anything about the Zodiac Killer, he had this whole cipher, this this code text that people are still trying to crack to this day, honestly. And uh, I don't believe anybody's truly uh, deciphered it, but maybe these knots on the chart could be representations of letters or something along those lines. And it's going to spell out something that we need to solve. That would be pretty interesting right there if they kind of took a little thing from the Zodiac Killer. I, that would be kind of wild. Uh, Shea Ryder has said... Maybe we'll be able to get the knife uh, from uh, Jason Goes to Hell, and we'll be able to maybe fight and kill Jason, maybe in the cabin or something along those lines, uh, you know, when we solve this. So that was pretty neat. And the last one here by Ben Smith, I think, is completely awesome. And I hope he's right. Now, he's made a reference to the fact of how when we are standing here looking at the Jasons, you can clearly see... Jason is way taller than us. Matter of fact, I think Paul Phoenix did do a video about the height difference between counselors and um, Jason. But you can see, like, I can't even see his head. Now, the crazy part is, he believes that the person we're playing in this cabin is Jason Voorhees' mom, Pamela Voorhees. Like, we're walking around in this cabin as Pamela. That's what he's saying. And I was like, whoa. Like, complete mind blow right there. What if we are playing Pamela and we just don't know it? We can't see hands or anything like that. And I want to expand on this, okay? Now, I know for a fact Wes Keltner has told me that they are, you know, pretty big fans of the Silent Hill franchise, right? Now, if you think about the cabin even more, it's basically kind of like playing P.T., you know? Just solving little puzzles and everything like that. You know, PT was the playable trailer that they had for the old Silent Hill game. And we didn't, you know, you know, they got canceled and everything. Big controversy, but yeah. So you can kind of put this as kind of like a playable trailer as well, even though it's an interactive dev diary. But, you know, we know Pamela Voorhees is not in the game when it comes to the stretch goal list. But what if Gun Meeting and Ilphonic have decided to surprise us and give us a gift and maybe make... Pamela Voorhees playable for us, but they're just not telling us yet. And this entire time, we are playing this as Pamela Voorhees. And when it comes to that bathroom, they may pull a, you know, a card out of their hat from uh, the old PT. We may step in front of a mirror in there and see the reflection of ourselves, which could be Pamela Voorhees. Just something to think about, guys. I again, I do not know if it's true. Those are just theories and speculation, but I do think it is cool nonetheless all right guys if you guys find any more references and easter eggs and things of that nature then please be for sure to go ahead and tweet me these things put them down in the comment section i'll be sure to go ahead and shout you guys out and i hope you guys have enjoyed this video and i hope it helps you out and if it has then please be sure to go ahead and slap that like button down below and don't forget to subscribe to join the charma today and you guys are more than welcome to go ahead and comment below and follow me on twitter to stay up to date with all my youtube videos i'm charma next and as always thanks for watching and y'all come back now you hear